if you're a regular to the show, then you already know that no river, no forest, and no bug is too tough to tame for Ranger Nick. Yeah, that's right. And recently, Nick and myself hiked a mile or two down the Confluence Trail just outside of Atlanta to investigate a problem that's really been bugging him. All right, so I know you're wondering, I've been teasing you about this tiny insect and the influence that it can have over these trees, these ash trees around the country. I'm joined by a good friend, Dr. Dave Coyle, who's with the Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources at the University of Georgia and also the Southern Region Extension Forestry Group. And Dr. Coyle, so this bug, what is this insect and why should our friends at home care? Well, Nick, this insect is a little tiny green beetle that comes from Asia and it, we first found it in North America in 2002. We think it's been here probably a few years before that. So it's probably been in the country 20 years. Okay. And this little insect attacks ash trees and ash trees only, but attacks until recently have been completely fatal. Mm. And they're only not fatal now because we know how to treat it a little bit better. And that's some of the things that you do with the University of Georgia is treating those insects. Now, so an ash tree, how do I even know I'm, I'm looking at an ash tree if I'm sitting at home and I think I might have one on my property? What am I looking for? Well, ash trees have a few different characteristics, and we've got one right here. The first thing we can look at is branches are opposite. They come off exactly on either side of the main branch. You've okay. got a branch here and a branch here. Okay. And then on that branch, ash has what we call uh, leaflets on the leaves. So this whole thing is a leaf. But each of these little units is a, called a leaflet. And ash has between five and 11 leaflets uh, on each leaf. And so these two characteristics make an ash tree. It's also got bark that mm -hmm. uh, the bark is really pressed together. It almost looks like you took an accordion and pressed it together. Really tight bark crevices there. That's another good way to tell you've got an ash tree. That's excellent. I've heard that with ash trees and maple trees and dogwoods, they've all got that opposite branching. So knowing about the leaf scar and the five to seven to 11 leaves and also that bark, that's great. Let's talk about how you know if your ash tree is infected by these insects. All right, so Dave showed us a green ash tree that had a little less damage to it, kind of starting with the emerald ash borer. And Dave, we're standing with a tree now that looks like it's got a little bit more damage. Talk to us about some of the things that are happening with this tree. Well, Nick, you can see this tree is completely snapped off, and that's one of the problems with ash is it gets brittle when it dies. So okay. when it dies, it becomes a hazard tree. Okay. But as you look underneath here where this bark is peeled off, you can see all these galleries where these emerald ash borer larvae have eaten and they've wound their way through and if you look really closely you can even see where they start really small and the gallery gets larger as that little beetle larva grows up and once it gets uh, to a certain size it goes through a pupil stage and then it will come out you'll see those d-shaped exit holes it'll come out of that tree and it'll be one of these nice green beetles they're about the about a half inch long or so and this is what the emerald ash borer looks like this is what causes all this damage. It's incredible that the beauty really of this tree to see those galleries start off smaller as that little larvae is growing and growing, then popping back out of that tree with that D-shaped hole. It's incredible. And I think the folks at home can all look for this kind of stuff on their property and know this is what's going on. Thanks, Dave. Interesting. Well, what a day. We've seen light damage on ash trees. We've seen heavier damage on ash trees. And I want you all to know we haven't been out in the middle of nowhere. We've been in a woodlot just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And one of the things I want to talk to you about is so what can you do at home? So you see an ash tree that's got some problems. What can you do? Well, you all know me and I always wear my Ranger Nick uniform in Georgia Extension and your local Extension office is a first place to go for answers about questions you have regarding those trees. Have an agent come out and help you is my tree damage they can help you with that another thing that you can do is work with local stakeholders and I'm joined by a couple of them today Kimberly Eastep with the Southport Conservancy is here as well as Brian and Kevin with Trees Atlanta these are folks that can help us and Kimberly what are some other things that we can do we say extension what are some other things to help these green ash trees well, while we've been working to restore the habitats along the creek bank, we've really put an emphasis on a diversity of trees so that when the ash trees go down, it won't be an entire habitat that's lost. Excellent. But when the trees do fall, they're going to provide really important habitat for native species. Excellent. And y'all know I'm a big fan of coarse woody debris and those snags that are created by those trees. Great stuff, Kimberly. You know, another thing that you can do, very, very simple is when you're going camping this fall, don't move that firewood. Don't take it over a county line. Those little emerald ash borers get in there and you're moving them all over the place. So something to keep in mind. Well, y'all, you know me. 
Thank you all so much for spending another little bit of time with me. I got to thank Dr. Dave Coyle, spending some time riding together with me over here to Atlanta. We had a blast today. Go on Facebook. You know the deal. Go on there, check out the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page, and while you're there, slide on over to the Ranger Nick Facebook page. We have getting just a blast talking with you, and I appreciate y'all doing that. So for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you, as always, that enthusiasm is contagious. So pass that stuff on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here again next month. See ya.